calling, calling the Matic Toronto Canada. Looking at dubbing up your hi hat and adding some interest to that. In previous episodes, we've looked at the snare drum and dubbing that up and having a couple with the reverb and echo. And we've also looked at adding live elements to your overall program drum sounds along with those echoes and delays really in an effort to create maximum interest and movement within the track as it goes along from top to bottom so in previous episodes we've looked at the snare drum and dubbing that up and having a couple with the reverb and echo and we've also looked at adding live elements to your overall program drum sounds along with those echoes and delays really in an effort to create maximum interest and movement within the track as it goes along from top to bottom so right to get to it uh so let's get to it right now this is a track that we've been working on which is subsystem dub i called it that and i've also taken all this so let's get to it so let's get right to it. This is the subsystem dub track that I've created, and it's part of a dub pack series. This is volume one, where I actually take the entire track, I stem it out, so everything that you see here is made available in a pack with the groups, the individual tracks, all mixed as is. Then I also have the loop version, and I've also got an Ableton kit and a machine kit. So there's MIDI files, there's presets, there's the loops, there's the one shots, and of course the full track stems in there. But let's look at this. So I've mentioned this before. This is the hi-hat right here, and it's a live hi-hat. So I played it live. I found the parts that I liked. I looped it up, as you can see, as it goes across here. And now what I want to do, final step for this whole drum track, is just add some more movement and interest. And there's two go-tos for me that I always do uh, when it's a dubbier type of track is A, I add echo. So there's two ways to add echo. There's the outboard gear, which in this case, I'll give you a quick demo using the Benny Dub. Uh, delay system and also in the box which any delay will work echo delay unit uh, so let's take a look so here's the live it's simple it's it's monotonous and it's supposed to be there it's militant because i want that to help keep the drive going because this is a stepper song so if you hear it in context so that hi-hat that you're hearing has a tambourine in it and that tambourine hits exactly where the snare hits so you kind of get that little accent boost and what i've done is here in, in this track there are three hi-hats and that's because each one has little different parts and they come in at different times as you can see this hi-hat two only comes in near the end hi-hat one has louder parts and then softer parts so i'll just give you a sample of two of them together so you get an idea of utilizing and maximizing different hi-hat parts You can hear that has conga and with echo. This one has conga, but it's dry. So if you put them all together, you get this nice little groove. Now add that where I've added the ride symbol, which is live played and I've layered that in. So that gives you an idea. So what we're gonna do first of all is I'm just gonna lay in some echo. I've pre-done it just to for speed's sake. On this one, here it is. This is the Echo Boy Junior. Again, you can use any plugin you have that comes default with your system. And there's a lot of good free ones. Taldub is great. I would go download that. It's a free piece of software. I've used that extensively for years and he does a terrific job. You can make a donation if you want. There is a paid version, but he also has free versions. Just look it up, Taldub. So this is the Echo Boy. I'm a big fan of Sound Toys products. And what I like about the Echo Boy Junior is it gives you all these flexible parameters to work with. So let's just start with normal, the mode here, normal, wide, and ping pong. I'm using ping pong because there's already a lot going on and I just want a bit of a subtle difference in there. I don't want it to be lost, otherwise you're not gonna hear it, so it's there. I've set it up to a dotted eight, so that gives you that more that, you'll know the W feeling when you get it. Uh, let's give you a sample here with it on. You can hear the difference here is bypassed. I don't need a lot of feedback. I don't want it to over feedback and overlap too much. I want to keep it pretty consistent so every time is the same. These are the different types of echo units available to you. I've got it on transmitter, which is kind of a very narrow band, kind of like a telephone style, a little bit wider, but it kind of is going to cut through the mix a little bit more. I rolled off the low end, and in this case, it's a hi-hat. There's not a lot, but that tambourine is in there, so that does bring it down, so I've rolled that off a little bit. The input stays the same. Saturation, this just adds a little bit more grit. So this is the basic premise. And what I've also done here, as you can see, this is the automated channel if you want, or you can just set it manually. 
it doesn't want to work with me and show me more but I don't want it on the whole track. I generally will add it after the final chorus as you're going out because it's that little difference to keep the ear interested because you, as you go through the track, there's always things coming in and out. And you know, a lot of people will say every four to eight bars, and I agree. You always want something little in there, subtle, doesn't have to be a big impact statement. So in this case, you'll hear it come in, I fade it in. So if you hear it in the track, you're grooving along. So it'll bring interest to the ear. I've got a little bit loud. I wouldn't mix it like that. It's just more to show you and let you hear what the difference is. So that is one option. So let me turn that off. And then the next one I'm gonna do is a live dub. So this is the Benny dub system. I just need to set up my system because this is where I use the mixing board. So on the mixing board, I actually have six aux stands, sends going through here. And each one of these goes to a delay or a reverb or something else, which I'll do another demonstration before. I like it because I've got the mute button here. The actual audio track is over here coming out. So whatever I do is going to keep going and get that delay. So let's just run through this and do this. I don't have this. This is the Benny Dub uh, digital delay. I don't have it set up to like the perfect sync tempo. It's just to give you an idea. So let's take a listen and dub it up. So let's kick off. I'll give you a quick demonstration here. There's a couple things that I'm going to use. It's the feedback, which control on here, which is not easy to see, but I'll post it up there. You kind of get an idea of the few dials. There's that, and then there's the filter. So I would actually run through the entire song and just add little bits and pieces and then cut it up. So I'll give you a quick demo here. Let's just uh, slap this up. kind of a delay on it. I'll throw some filter on it now. So that gives you a quick idea of what you can do. Uh, let me just do this. These are the ones. Generally, sometimes I'll get it too loud and then I just have to bring down the volume. So let's just do that. Put this in line. Do this. And again, I would layer this throughout the entire track and then pick the best bit. So, so I like that, but I might want to throw this right over here. This is where you kind of go, okay, there's a breakdown coming. How would that sound? <laughs> All right, you go, that's cool, that works, it's subtle. Now here's a cool tip that I do a lot uh, on tracks and have for years. I have this, I go, okay, well, I've already done this echo and delay, don't need it again, we've heard it. But to change it up as I'm coming back into the final chorus build up, say, I'll reverse it. So let's reverse this and see how this sounds now. It sounds like this. I like it. That sounds cool to me. So we'll just leave that in there. And then we have just the main chord. Like this is something I can use just, uh, let me put that back, hang on. Crazy fingers. I might just use this on the chorus. Or I might just use it on the verse. It's really where it's where it depends, but you have this now and you can kind of break it up. Go, okay, that was the chorus. So let me, let me see what it's like on the verse. <laughs> That's cool, that works. And I go, okay, there's another verse over here, or build up. Maybe I'll use it on the build up area. Cool, that works. So that gives you a couple options. So you've got this, and then you can actually have both of these going. So if I flip back on the Echo Boy to come in at the end, I've got these little pieces from Benny Dub. That looks pretty good. I go, okay, cool. Now I've got some interesting sounds going on. Again, what I can do for, say, the live hi hat uh, dubbing, which are, is here I can pan it I can pan it over to the left or the right and you can hear it's ping-ponging it's got some interest going on so you've got a lot going on that seems to work hard right 
All right, so the last thing I can do to make this more interesting is the phaser, which you heard a little bit on the ride. If I was, I wouldn't have both on the ride and the hi-hat, but I'm just gonna give you an example with the hi-hat, because uh, not every track is gonna have a ride symbol. So I'm gonna throw this on. Again, this is Sound Toys, it's the phase mistress, and I'll just walk you through it real quick. The mix, how much I want it. The frequency range, this is looks like it's probably about around eight or 10. Uh, the resonance, the mod, I want it full on. And the rate, I'll generally keep fairly slow. Uh, there's a couple other, parameters that you can change like triangle or I can go sine wave. I'm going to go sine wave with this one because I want it to be a fairly smooth ride. And then I don't want to save that. Let's just check this out. It's smooth. It's subtle. So when you put it all together, If I want, I could just go, oh, I really want to hear that so I could crank it up. So I might do that. That's a nice like four bars. Then I could throw in this other echo if I wanted to really can enhance it. So there you go, that's pretty cool. That's a nice little tie-in as it goes into the chorus, like a slight buildup on the hi-hats. And when you put that all together, now you've got a pretty interesting drum track with a lot of different things going on. So throughout the track, there's always something going on. You can see these are other snare echoes, both these tracks. You've got the echoes for the hi-hats, you've got rides. You've got different parameters going on for phase shifters, uh, in the box um, echoes. So great selection of stuff. You can mix and match, play around, see what works, see what makes sense, don't overdo it. Try to always make it, everything that you do has to make sense. It has to enhance the song and push it forward. If it's too much, you'll know, cause it'll just kind of get You'll get your ear gets hears it and kind of goes, I got fatigue. I don't want to hear this anymore. So, so there you have it. A few different ideas for dubbing up your hi hat and adding interest throughout your program drums and the three different episodes we looked at. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with me anytime. I always welcome them. If there's something you want to see in the future, just let me know. Dubmatix at dubmatix.com, and I'll see you again next week. Matic, the Matics, Taran to Canada, Bandadin, la 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 la.